Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, one of the cool things you can do with a software defined radio receiver is to create your own virtual aircraft radar at home. And if you already own an SDR like this one or any RTL SDR, then it isn't going to cost you much more money. If you haven't seen this before, then essentially you'll be using the SDR receiver to receive little data burst packets from aircraft flying overhead. Along with other information, these data packets can contain aircraft location and using free software, we can decode these packets and plot those aircraft on a map. Now, one of the key components of setting up a system like this is the antenna. And this is because those ADSB data bursts are transmitted on 1090 megahertz, that's 1.09 gigahertz. Now, don't let this put you off because making an antenna for this frequency is a lot cheaper and easier than buying a ready-made antenna. However, of course, you can if you want to. In fact, I'll show you how you can make a quarter wave ground plane vertical antenna for ADS-B, just using some enameled copper wire and a plug. Then we'll test it to see how well it performs. So first we'll need to get the measurements. And by using this handy quarter wave antenna calculator found online at m0ukd.com, we can see that the main vertical element needs to be 6.5 centimeters long, and then the four ground planes need to be 7.3 centimeters long. So first up, I'll need to cut the wire to the required lengths, and I'll need a total of five lengths of wire. So first I measure out the vertical element, then cut to as near 6.5 centimeters as I can. I then cut a further four lengths at near 7.3 centimeters each. As I'll be soldering these onto a connector for easy mounting, I'll need to remove the enamel on at least one end of each of the pieces of wire. Now luckily this enamel will just burn off with lots of heat from the soldering iron. With a good dollop of solder on the end of the iron tip, you can run this up and down the wire until the solder starts to stick to the copper. In short, this is called tinning. Now do the same for all five pieces. In fact, if you want to, you can scrape off some of the enamel using a blade before you start soldering. And this might make it easier if you do not have a soldering iron with a high temperature. Now remember that the whole piece of wire will become extremely hot. So using something like a little helping hands device with some form of clamp to hold the wire will save you burning yourself. Now for this quick test, I'll just use an SMA chassis mount socket, making sure to tin each of the four corners of the connector ready for soldering on those ground plane wires. But we'll also tin the center pin where we will mount that vertical part of the antenna wire. And once tinned, you can start to attach the wires like this. Now I'm just soldering these in the most sparse way possible, purely for time while I make this video. But you can take longer and fix these wires in a more secure way if you're going to use this antenna for some time or maybe even outdoors. Remember that all of those elements and the connector itself will be extremely hot after soldering all these parts together. So just let it cool down a bit before you touch it. So once it's cooled down, you can carefully bend the four ground plane wires to around 45 degrees. Ideally, these wires should be perfectly straight, but in my testing, having a slight kink didn't really make that much difference. So this is the end result. And hopefully if you had followed along, yours should look something like this too. Of course, the connector that I used is just what I had spare laying around. And you can use any connector that you like even something like an SO239 socket. In fact, you don't even need to use a connector. You could just solder these onto a 50 ohm piece of coax, but I'll save that for another day. So now it's time to test the resonant point of this antenna. Now we're aiming for the lowest SWR at 1.09 gigahertz. Now these little RF vector impedance analyzers are brilliant for things like this, and they're relatively cheap. I'll leave a link in the description if you fancy getting yourself one. Now I must admit before recording this section of the video, I had already tested the SWR and it was slightly high. Now luckily this device does have a particular screen which shows you where the resonant dip is. 
Now, when I first connected, the dip was lower than 1.09 gigahertz, which indicated that the antenna section was too long. Now, I nipped about one millimeter at a time until that dip, as shown here, was right in the middle of where the 1.09 gigahertz marker is, meaning that this was perfectly tuned for ADSB reception. By using a bit of rigid coax, I connected the antenna to my SDR receiver, and then I just taped the antenna to the window frame. Now, it's not exactly in the best location, as it should really have full 360 degree, unobstructed view of the sky. However, just make do with what you have to play with. Now, the application here on the top left is called RTL 1090, and it's a free download from the internet. Now, this application controls the RTL SDR device itself. It sets its frequency, and then it decodes the ADSB packets. This application then outputs its data to the application on the bottom left, which is called Virtual Radar Server. Now, this generates a local web page which shows in real time all of the aircraft that's been detected with valid position data. Now, as you can see here, it's working. So just an RTL SDR and a simple quarter wave ground plane vertical, and I'm able to receive, decode, and plot aircraft on a map in my area and even further afield. Now, if this antenna was a lot higher and didn't have any obstructions, the distance in which it could receive should be a lot greater. But as it is, it's fairly impressive considering we just built this antenna ourselves. So what else can we do to improve reception and performance with this antenna, apart from sticking it on a pole and putting it above the roof? Well, you could use something like this. This is an ADS-B Sawbird filter with built-in low noise amplifier from the company Neuralec. Now this goes between the antenna and the SDR receiver. It does need to be powered, so it can be powered either from the bias T voltage from the SDR, or if your SDR doesn't support bias T, you can externally power it using a USB cable plugged into that USB port on the filter itself. Now this particular filter also supports UAT input of 978 megahertz, which I believed is used in the States, maybe used in other countries, but here in the UK, it's not really used. Now the Sawbird ADSB filter from Neuralec not only filters unwanted signals, it also amplifies any weak signals that it receives on 1090 megahertz. So let's try it with the ADSB filter installed to see if we can improve the performance. Well, that's just awesome. And remember that the actual antenna is still below the roof line on the house with obstructions, and it's still working extremely well. In fact, just by installing this Sawbird filter and LNA, it's increased the receive message count and the number of aircraft that I'm currently detecting. So what about comparing this little homemade ADS-B antenna and Neuralec filter combination with a commercially made filtered and amplified ADS-B antenna? Now this one on my mast is made by JetVision and is normally my go-to antenna for when testing with ADS-B projects. Now this is the results of using the mast antenna. Now I know that it's slightly directional because it's mounted so close to the actual aluminium mast but it does normally perform very well. Now compared to my homemade ADS-B antenna with the Neuralec Sawbird combo, there isn't that much in it, which makes me want to try this homemade antenna high up above the roof, or maybe that's a project for another day. It also makes me wonder why we pay so much for commercially made antennas. Maybe it's just the convenience of that plug and play. However, where's the fun in that? Also part of the hobby, is experimenting and making antennas. Anyway, until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.